Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this video, I want to show you how we can take an ordinary plain database and then create a service that makes it an API. That way we can send API requests to get information and also to insert information into our database. Let's get started. We'll be building this inside of Wayscript, but I think it's a more powerful example to show you how we'll interact with the finished product first. How we'll interact with the finished product is let's say on our local machine, we want to insert information into a database. What we can do is use a simple request to do so. In this, we're sending a post request to a Wayscript hosted URL, and I'll show you all of the specifics of this later in the video. But what this service gives us access to do is to send a simple post request to a URL where we can send a payload and insert information into the database table of your choice. In this example, let's say we wanted to insert a value of 1000, a value of Mike, and an age of 99 into the users table. All we have to do is send a post request to this URL and we'll get that entry added into our database. Executing this, we'll just run Python on my local machine. We should get back null for no errors, response of 200, so it worked. And now what we can do is get that entry using another post request. So get entry from table. We can say column of ID needs a value of 1000. So that entry that we just added, we'll make sure it's at our Wayscript hosted URL and we'll send this one. So Python get entry from table dot pi and we should get that entry back, which we do. So it's that easy to interact with the database, add entries and get information back out of it. And this is the service I want to show you how to create in this video. Let's jump on over to how we can get this set up inside of Wayskirt. Starting out, why might you want to create this service for yourself? There's a ton of different reasons, but one of the main ones is we want other people to be able to interact and get information from our database without giving away too much of our credentials or security whenever it comes to interacting with that database. What we might want to do is create a tool where other people can query it, or if they need to add information to a table, they can. And they can do that all without having to interact directly with the database. The way to do this is we can create an API where the user can just send a request with some information and do whatever it is they need to do. There's a bunch of different moving pieces to this project, and I want to share with you why we're using Wayscript to do this project. Well, the first reason is that we need different credentials to be stored safely to access our database. We don't want to expose these credentials inside of our application, but rather into an environment. And that's why Wayscript is pretty awesome to do this. Instead of just having an application hosted somewhere, Wayscript gives us access to the entire environment so we can store those secrets safely in a SOC 2 compliant platform. Additionally, the idea of what we're doing here is more like a service. We want to host endpoints where someone can interact with the tool that they've created. This service allows individuals to do just that. And what we might want to do in the future is to create more services. That way we can have an interconnected network of all these tools working together. Wayscript gives us a very easy to access and safe to manage place where we can do just that. We can do that through the use of workspaces. Workspaces in Wayscript allow us to invite other members to our team where they can use our tools or program in whatever language they want to create new services and applications all inside that one workspace. And like I said, Wayscript is programming language agnostic. So we're building this tool in Python, but if someone else wanted to build a tool in JavaScript within the same workspace, they totally could. And it would be no problem in the configuration of our environments. To get started building our application, we'll want to sign into Wayscript.com. From here, we can create something called a workspace. A workspace allows us to add other members to our workspace so they can work on the same projects or use the same tools that we built. In this example, I'll create a workspace called Company Tools and then I'll click on Create. What this does is put us inside of that workspace. Inside this workspace, we can create something called a layer. A layer in Wayscript is just a pre-configured environment in which we can build our tools into. For this example, let's click on Create a new layer. We'll say DB API sample and click create layer. Once we click on create, we're put inside of our layer where we can start inputting our logic into our file directory on the left and then our executions into a dot triggers file. At the bottom, we have a terminal 
where we can run any terminal commands here. And we also have a process tab where we can view all the running processes in our layer. Once your layer is set up, we'll need all the files from a GitHub repository to be uploaded into our file directory. Those files can be found within this GitHub repo right here, which is linked down below. And we'll go into services, databases, and then SQL database API. All the files here should be uploaded to your waste group layer. And I'll do that now and cut back. Once we have all these files uploaded into our layer, let's briefly talk about the concepts in this video. So we're creating an API. And the way that we're doing that in this video is by using this app.py file. This is the basis of our Flask server. Inside this app.py file, we have all the different API routes. And when a user goes to one of these routes, you can see that an action takes place. That action is we're creating a connection to our database. And once we have that connection, we're using it to do some query against that database. Once we execute that query, then we get the results back and we return that as the API response from our Flask app. So hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, in short, all we're doing is setting up the pass for a user to go to for our API. To create this connection, we'll need something secure, and we'll do that using the .secrets file inside of Wayscript. To get a .secrets file, what we'll need to do is to click the plus icon in the top left, and then we'll choose secrets. This .secrets file, we'll need to put in some information. The information we need to put in is the information we need to connect to our database. We can see this setup inside of our logic.py file. Inside logic.py, you see that we're getting secrets from our environment, and the secrets that we're looking for are titled host, user, password, and database. To set these up, we'll go into that .secrets file that we created, and we'll say host, and we'll put this value in. These credentials come from your database, so you'll need these in order to connect to your database. In this example, I'm using a Heroku database set up to one of my Heroku apps, and I'll use this information to connect to it. Ideally, you don't share this information with anyone else because this gives them access to your database where they can query it and actually write to it as well. So I will copy this and I'll post this into my value of my host key. Once I have that, I can click on add secret in the bottom right. And what that does is add that to a secret variable that I can reference by using this statement here. We'll do that for user, password, and database. So I'll go ahead and add each of those. So we have host, user. I'll take my Heroku database and copy that value and paste it in. I'll do the same thing for the other two. Once we have these four values, we're easily able to connect to your database and start writing and querying information from it. At this point, we're using a Flask app. So any change that we make on the back end, we don't want to have to redeploy the Flask application. So what we'll do is a little shortcut. We'll add a .env file for environment variables. Here, it's called Flask env, and we'll put in development. We're just working on developing this application, so we'll want to go back and remove this later. But for the moment, to get additional information, we'll use this environment variable and it should help us out. At this point, we have everything set up. We have our code in place. We have our secrets set up. And the final thing that we need to do is to host our Flask server. We can do that by using a deploy trigger within our triggers file, which is in our file directory. Since we want to deploy a Flask server, we have a deploy trigger to do just that. How a deploy trigger works is when a user goes to this URL, the command to run is executed. In our case, we're setting up a Flask server, so we will use a command that looks like this. This command is linked down below and also in the description. So if you want to copy it from there, you can. And then once we have that, we need to set a port. Finally, we'll click on run and we'll save all if we have anything unsaved and we'll give it a few seconds to set our application up. After those few seconds, we should be able to visit our URL and see the information in our templates directory. 
the index page is just a simple API reference where we can see some of the different routes and the arguments that we need to pass to those routes. You can make this a lot prettier for your own site, but I just wanted to give you a template to get started. Next, let's take a look at the actual API portion of this. Let's say we want to get the tables from a database. What we can do is use this path and append it onto the end of our URL, and we should get back an API response of all the tables from our database, which we do. So that means we have a secure connection to our database where we can query information and insert information into it. Now, I have a few included examples to help you get started using this new tool. And let's go and look at those. So first, let's take a look at our SQL query of describe table. And as you can see, all we're saying is describe, and then we have a Python input of table. What this is saying is whatever table the user passes to our API, let's send that into this query. We'll parse this as an SQL statement, and then we'll execute it. So the path that we need is in app.py. We're looking for describe table, which is right here. And as you see, when a user sends a post request to this URL in our Flask application, what we're doing is we're saying get the payload that the user sends remove the key of table from it, then create a connection and use that describe table SQL statement, inserting table into it, and then give us the result of columns. So in short, we're just setting up our API to give us back our columns. An example of this, we can find in our examples folder over here to the left, and we can see describe table. In this example, I have a user's table. So let's get back all the columns from that user's table. We'll need to get the URL that our trigger provided us. So we will paste that in here. Make sure that it is copied and pasted in correctly. And now we can use the terminal built in to WayScript to say Python examples describe table.py. Once we get back that API response, we see that our results are ID, name, and age. So we have three columns. Let's go ahead and insert information into our database by using another example. We'll open insert data. We will paste in our URL here. And remember, we have three columns. So in this one, we're specifying a table in our payload and also a value. This value key needs to be the same for this API response but according to how many values that you need for your columns, this will change. In my example, we had three columns of an ID. So let's put in 120. We'll use my name and then we'll use an age. Now that we have all of this, let's execute this statement so we can add this information into our database. We see that we get nothing back, which is probably a good sign since it's not an error. And now what we can do is query the database by saying get entry from a table. And get entry from a table, we will go ahead and change the URL path again. And now let's say we want to query the data that we just inserted. So the ID in this is 120. So we'll say column ID and then value 120. So hopefully we get back that content that I just inserted into our database. So we'll say Python examples, get entry from table.py. And I'm doing all these Python scripts inside a way script, but the idea here is that you can query this from your own local machine and just have this service set up for other people in your company or yourself. So we will execute this statement and hopefully get back that information we just inserted, which we do. Awesome. So we've already seen a few examples of the cool things that we can do with this new API service. The last one I want to show you is get all from table where we'll just get all the information from some table. The arguments that we need to pass in our payload is the table we want to get these from. And then we can just execute this. So Python examples, and this one is get all from table.py. And we should get back all the entries from this table in a payload response, which we do. After we finished up doing all the development that we want to do inside of our layer, 
What we may want to do is go back and remove that environment variable that we created. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that. And also we might want to deploy this so we have two different versions of what we've created. We'll have this dev state and we'll have a prod state. In the prod state, we can interact with their API without worrying about any editing that may be occurring in the dev state. To deploy our dev environment into a prod one, what we can do is click this deploy button to the left. Then we'll click this deploy button, give it just a second, and it will deploy into a prod environment so we can interact with our API and still make changes to our dev one. We see that it just deployed. So now we have two different environments where we can go home and back into this layer. And what we can do is we can make any changes in our dev one, which is what we're in right now. Then we have access to the prod one. We can access the prod one by clicking this arrow at the top left and then going to prod. You see that the terminal becomes unavailable because we're in a production state and we can still go and access our URL to interact with our service. So with all of that said, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I hope it was useful and as always, if you have any questions or comments, please let us know and we'll help you out. Until next time.